the second uh, class here, uh, New Creation Life, uh, discipleship uh, training. Jesus said to go into the world, make disciples of all nations. And uh, so we're preaching the gospel to every creature, and we're making disciples of all nations. So we're here making uh, disciples. But tonight we're getting into statement of faith and uh, breaking down doctrines that we believe and uh, according to the Word of God, getting into the Word and uh, seeing what God says about it. And uh, so anyway, um, just continue on from first class. If you didn't catch the first one, uh, go on our Facebook, catch the first one. Thank you for joining in, those of you that are coming on. And uh, next we're going to go to virgin birth, okay? This is very important. Jesus Christ was conceived by God the Father through the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. In the virgin Mary's womb, therefore he is the Son of God. Very important there. So... Uh, Matthew chapter 1, uh, verse Say amen when you get it. Amen. amen. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, uh, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Let's read that again. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, so they had never had sex, they had never been together in that sense, so she was still a virgin. Very important when you see this. And then it says, the last part of that verse, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 I don't know where my pen went to. Okay. Of the Holy Ghost. I want you to get you a, make you a box or something around that. A child of the Holy Ghost. I put me a box around mine. But make you a, make you a mark there in your Bible. That way you know what it is because it's important that you see that. And it's important that you see how that is. Because the thing about discipleship class is this. It's not only knowing it, but you're able to show somebody else. Because at some point you're going to have to show somebody. So if you're, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, if somebody asks you, then you can show them what the Bible says, what the scriptures say. And that's the important thing. A lot of people say what they believe, but okay, teach me, show me. Uh, 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 oh, well, what do you believe? Well, show me. I'm, I'm not saying you're lying, but teach me. <clears throat> that's what you say, teach me the Bible, teach me the word. If I say that and I preach it, I ought to be able to teach it. I ought to be able to say, okay, go to Matthew chapter 1, verse, go to Romans chapter 8, verse, go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10. Go to Revelations chapter 1, verse, let me take you there. I know in what I have believed. I know in whom I have believed. Why? Because the infallible word of God says it. The Holy Scriptures say it. Where? Well, I don't know. I found. I heard it. What do you mean you don't know where? I don't know where. I'm saying, if, if, if we do that, then what do we look like? I well, I heard it. Well, I heard the preacher say it. Okay, that's good. I know it's true. I didn't call him a liar. But now we're getting into the Word. Now you know. So right here he says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with a child. Of the Holy Ghost. Oh my goodness. See, that's good stuff. If, if you don't shout, I mean, I'm telling you, that, that makes me jump up and down inside. 
because she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Now go down to verse 25 real quick. And knew not, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. My goodness, if that don't make you happy. Man, you could be saved today and not have to, uh, and you could get you could get joy all over again. <laughs> you could be saved all over again today. You hear me? Oh, praise God! Praise God! Luke chapter one. Luke chapter one and verse thirty-five. And some of these we've already been into, but it's good to go back through them Amen. because some of them pertain to all these. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So we see right here what we was talking about when I was you know, when I was preaching. The high the the, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So right there it is. The Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary. Amen. The Word of God came. I think it was Gabriel, wasn't it, that came? The angel that came and told Mary, said, you're going to have a, you're going to have a son. You're going to have a son. The Word of God was proclaimed. God's Word was proclaimed. She received it. She took it. Boom, Holy Ghost overshadowed her. She became pregnated by the Holy Ghost. With who? Jesus, the Son of God. So we're still looking at virgin birth here. It says, uh, the New Testament says God, you can look at this scripture up, you Google it or whatever, but write this down. It says, God hath prepared him a body. You can look up the scripture. I can't tell you the exact scripture, but I can, I can show it to you afterwards. But it says, God hath prepared him a body. God prepared him a body in Mary's womb. Prepared him a body. And he was born out of the Holy Spirit. This Jesus of Nazareth. Wow. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Yeah, Isaiah 7 and 14. It says, the, the Lord therefore, or therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. God with us. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. A virgin shall conceive. See, Isaiah wrote about that long before it happened. God spoke through Isaiah. Amen. He was speaking through the scriptures and through, like he said there, that that's why we take the infallible word of God, the holy scriptures. God breathed scriptures, the word of God. God breathed. God spoke and wrote through, uh, through man. That's why he said the scriptures through the prophets. This was the prophet Isaiah that he was wrote that was wrote. Now you're con yeah. Now you're connecting the Holy Bible, now you're connecting Trinity, now you're connecting Jesus Christ. See, it's all, con it's all connecting. Now we're seeing right here the prophet Isaiah prophesied, amen, of a virgin birth, of all this that was going to take place. And he said, you shall call his name Emmanuel. Well, it didn't happen until years and years and years later, but he prophesied it then, and he spoke it then, and it came. And there was a man named Jesus that came, born of a virgin. Amen. And uh, thank God for that. So, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Matthew 
Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, therefore they came together and she was found with it, or, or they, they came, or before they came together, before they, they consummated or had sex or anything like that, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. We touched on that again, but it's good to read when you're studying. It's good to go back over it and it's good to go back into it. We're talking about the virgin birth here, but we've got to see the scriptures that say and that prove that there was a virgin birth. You cannot get outside of the Word of God. Church, if you get outside the Word of God, you're going to be in trouble and you're going to be in error. You're going to, you're going to miss it. A lot, of, a lot of familiar spirits operate outside of the Word of God. They're, it's not the Word of God. And they get off into weirdness because this, they're not operating according to the Word. You can't separate Word and Spirit. Word and Spirit together works together. You've you got to have the Word as the foundation, as the truth. Then the, the Spirit bears witness to what? To truth. Word and spirit helps you to grow up. Grow up into the things of God. Grow up as a Christian. But you got to have both. But the word is the foundation. Everything, guys, you got to be able to prove it by the word of God. That'll keep you in clear. That'll keep you in, 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 in line. That'll keep you where you need to be. That's why it's, he said the word of God's profitable for what? For correction, for, for you know, reproof. Uh, amen. For exhortation profitable amen. amen it's profitable hallelujah virgin birth Luke 130 oh, we've already been to Luke ain't we yeah, okay uh, Isaiah 714 we've already been there Matthew chapter 1 and 18 been there ain't we that's where we just were okay okay go down to 23 then let's go to 23 through 25 Behold, a virgin shall be with a child, and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took to him a wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. Let's see here. Go to Luke chapter 1 and verse Luke chapter 1 verse 27, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. Wow, and when, he, and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind, what manner of salutation this should be. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore the holy thing that is in thee, or which that holy thing which shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. Amen and amen. Okay, I want to, I want to, I want to talk about another one called a redemption. I, I just want to scratch the surface here. And uh, this is this is just something, but redemption. Man was created what? Man was created good. Man was created upright. No good. Uh, God don't create bad thing. God don't create right. He don't create bad things, right? He he created man, and man was good and upright. But by voluntary transgression, he fell. By his own free will, and by his choosing of sin, he fell. Adam fell. 
but he was created perfect and he was created upright. And, 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 and he chose to sin, he chose to disobey God, and when he did that, he fell. So now that he fell, his only hope of redemption is in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The only hope, there's not ten different hopes. There's not ten different ways, there's not two different ways. There's one way, one truth, one life, and that's through Jesus Christ, the Son. There's no other way. No other way. Redemption is only found in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and through him. So we're going to go to a couple of scriptures and talk about redemption. Uh, just, just like I said, we're going to scratch the surface here. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 31. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over every creeping thing, over the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And uh, so God created man in his own image and in the likeness of man, in the likeness of God created he him, male and female. He, he them and God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that creeps upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, and uh, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree. I'm going to read a little farther. In which the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat. Okay, I'm going to stop with that. Go to go to Genesis chapter three, verses one through seven. Now, right here, we're talking about redemption. Okay. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of the free tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the tree, of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. So the reason I'm saying this is because we're talking about redemption. And when I said God, God created man perfect and upright, because it says here... And God said, if I go back to verse 26, just hold your place right there in chapter 3. But if you go back, now look, we've got to prove it with the scriptures. So if, if redemption is part of our statement of faith, and we say, okay, God created man good and upright. He didn't create man to be evil. He created man good and upright in his likeness and in his image. He said, I created man in our likeness and in our image. Breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, making him a living being, living spirit, living soul, or living soul. After the likeness have dominion, he gave him dominion, and he gave him all that. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Does that sound bad? If he created man in his image and it was bad, then, 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 then you see what I'm saying? Then he would be calling himself bad, and there's no bad in God. There's no, there's no, there's no, he's holy, he's, he's pure. He's, he's, he's so pure we can't even come before him. We can't even come before him unless we got the blood, unless we've been covered in it and been born again. There's no way. If he entered into a, a vessel that had not been born again, it would explode. It would, it would burn up and disintegrate right then because of how holy he is. <sighs> My goodness. So, so when I say that, I say redemption. So when I make that statement, man was created good and upright, but by voluntary transgression, he fell. I need to be able to back that up with Scripture. Yeah. When you say, I believe in the Trinity, okay, you do. Well, the Trinity, the Word, ain't in the Bible. We, we say that because we use that as a triune, just the way to describe Okay, the Godhead, easiest way to describe it, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But if you say the Trinity, you can't look at the word Trinity and find the word, exactly the word Trinity. But we understand what that means. But somebody, if you say, if you say, okay, I believe in the Trinity, okay, well, really, well, show me. Where do you see it? We, well, well, well Paul, Paul was in places and he, he conferred with him over the scriptures for like months. He would sit and they went over the scriptures and he was proving to them that Jesus was the Messiah. He said, there was, there, was, there was places that he spent months and months and months, some years, I think. 
going over them with the scriptures, persuading them that Jesus was the Christ, that this was the Messiah, that this was him, that, 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 that you didn't need to be under the law no more, that he come to fulfill all that. And, and now, now you, amen, that if you're under the law, you've fallen from grace, but God's offering you a better way. Amen. That you're not right by your own deeds and your own, you know, he, 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 God, God made it to where all men were guilty. God made it to where, to where every man was guilty. Praise God. Amen. Not so he could keep them there, but so he could save them. So he could be the one that, that you look to, uh, you know, and, and it's because of him that we live. And it's because of him that we have our, have our being and we have our life. It's not because of my religious upkeep and my church attendance. You understand? That's not what makes me right with God. Those are fruits of those are those are fruits of who I am. Those don't make me what I am. Those are fruits of who I am. Those are fruits of who you are. I'm faithful because He's faithful. You get what I'm saying? I'm not faithful to be more right with God or to be more accepted or to be more holy and righteous. I'm faith, faithfulness is a fruit of what what who I already am. You know, Him in me is faithful. He's faithful. Therefore, the more I become like him, the more I have to, the more those things are evident. Right? Amen. But I'm not doing those things. You get what I'm saying? So, you got to know what you believe, but you got to be able to prove it with scriptures. These are things that keeps you centered in the word of God. These are foundational truths and doctrinal belief systems that we have to have. If you don't have this, you're going to be all over the place. You ain't going to know what you believe. You're going to have ten different types of Pentecostals, and they'll tell you ten different things. Yes. You know, like Jesus. I mean, just being honest. It's nothing bad. We love you. I love you. You love me. But what, what do we get? Let's get down with the Word. Let's get down with the Scriptures. And say, you know, we're not religious, but at the same time, I've got to be able to prove what I believe. It's not, it's not just to say, I'm right, you're wrong. I, I know more than you. I know it's not to say that. It's to it's to know the truth. Amen. Not just to say you're wrong, but I want to know it because I want to know Him. I want to know more, and I want to be I want to be right. I don't want to get off. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to get halfway and and lose out. So I want to have a strong doctrinal foundation. I want to have a, I want to have a strong belief system in what I believe. And then from that, God can bring all the revelation that he wants. But my foundational truth system, and, and, and that's what keeps me, that's what will give me a foundation. He said, if you build it on a, on a sure foundation, which we know that, that, that God's the, you know, that Jesus Christ is the rock. He's the, he's the revelation that we're building on. There's no other way to build it. If you build on anything else, then you, you, he said it'll, it'll, it'll sink. But we're building on the, the truth of Jesus Christ, and the revelation of the Son. Upon this rock of revelation, I'm going to build my church. Upon this rock of revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ.